everybody, it's Omar. It is 7.50, August 7th, 2018. And I wanted to make a video building my watch list for tomorrow. It's been a long, long time since I uh, created a watch list. Last time I tried to attempt uh, to create a watch list, um, my computer was crazy, like the internet was down. And then I was like, eh, I just hadn't been motivated. Um, you know, so, uh, I've been taking, you know, pretty much the summer off. I, I, I think I've traded twice this summer. Um, I, I made some two nice trades. I didn't even post it or talk about it. But outside of that, I haven't really traded. Um, just been chilling, traveling. Um, you know, I have a full-time job. It's been very demanding. So I got a lot of that going on. Um, and, you know, every now and then I get on Twitter and, you know, I, I'll post, uh, you know, like something I seen today. I post a nice, nice chart. Um, some stuff I caught in action um, so yeah that's what I've been that's what's been going on but you know I've been watching the markets and everything still I always keep an eye on charts and what's moving what's not moving and all that kind of stuff so um, you know the plan for me is probably next month um, I'll be back uh, I'll be more active I've been getting a lot of inquiries about like starting a room and starting to teach and I'm really considering it more and more and more um, if you're interested, let me know. I mean, I guess my plan would be to actually have like a classroom setting. This is what I'm thinking. Um, it would be after hours, so after market. We would have a class, maybe like a couple of times a week. We'd build a watch list together. We'd talk about trades. We'd talk about strategy. And then like I would think maybe like on a Friday or Sunday or something, like, it, you know, one of those days, we'd actually have a class and everybody would, re would review the, the trades that you made. So... You know, people would volunteer, they would post their chart, and then we'd go through the chart setting, you know, go through the actual ticker, why you made the trade, what was your entry, what was your exit, what were you thinking? So that's what I'm thinking about, you know, but honestly, you know, my I don't have a lot of free time, so, you know, like everything else, time is money, so it would have to be worth it for me to do it. Um, you know, if I get enough interest and people are willing to do it, then I would do it. Um, you know, everybody now has a chat room. Steven Dogs, Roland Wolf is opening a chat room. Um, Modern Rock now and, and A209 is about about to open a chat room. I mean, there's just so much money in, in trading, teaching people how to trade that everybody's jumping on the bandwagon, to be quite honest with you. But the truth is, guys, that you... You know, none of these guys are like teachers by nature. They have no background in education, and they're not really vested in your education. They're they're more invested in your money. Um, you know, I guarantee you that you can name any chat room, and just about every chat room you go to, ninety nine percent of the people in that room are going broke. They may post one trade, and you know, they say, "Oh, thanks, Guru. I made a hundred dollars because of you. You're amazing." Meanwhile, they're down like thousands of dollars, and for whatever reason, people worship these gurus and uh some of you guys that follow me i seen you join some chat rooms that you know these gurus that i'm not i'm not too thrilled about you know but it's your money it's your life and you know you do what's best for you make sure you're learning but these guys most of them even the ones that you guys worship and defend are frauds man they they really have out to do one thing take as much of your money as possible you know and they're not even trading they're not even validating their broker statements they're not validating their executions they're not showing you their share size. They're not showing you anything because they're not trading. They're using screen share, they're using demo accounts, or if they're trading, they're trading very, very small because why would risk their own money when they're taking yours? So, you know, make sure, challenge them, make sure that they're teaching you, that you're learning strategies, that you're learning chart patterns. Um, if not, you know, stop giving them your money because it's not worth it. Do what I did, study, you know, watch YouTube. I got over 100 videos that you can watch you know i'm pretty accessible a lot of people ask me questions i'm more than you know i'll be more than happy to help anybody that asks me questions um and you can see that it's it's not rocket science man it's just a matter of understanding price action and the only way you learn about price action is by watching charts that's the way you really learn guys you literally have to sit in front of a screen and watch the stocks move that's the only way you're going to really understand how charts move no guru is going to teach you how to enter a trade you know so you know, just just keep that in mind. You know, and most of these gurus, like when you go to Stephen Duck's chat room, when you go to eight, you know, Modern Rock when he opens his and all that, these guys short low float penny stocks. You're not gonna be able to find shares to short the majority of these stocks. So you're basically giving them your money because you can't even trade the stocks they're trading. 
Um, and you're going to see, like, for example, when you go to Steven Ducks and when he posts his wins now, you notice that he's using Trade Zero to make his trades because he can't even get the shares on Center Point because they're not available. So, you know, these are things that they're not telling you, but they're getting rich off you, that's for sure. So, if I do this, I want to do this right. I wanna really want to teach you to be self sufficient um, so that you understand how to look at charts, how to find stocks, how to map your support and resistance so you know how to trade. And you see it's not as hard as you think. You know, it's not as hard as you think. Trading is super hard, but 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 finding an entry and why and all that stuff, it, when I teach you it, you're going to be like, damn, this shit is, you made this so easy. You don't need all these stupid indicators. Anyway, that was my little rant. Um, you know, if you want to talk about who I think about, what guru or what guru you're following and what I think about them and give you some think about, just DM me on Twitter and I'll give you some food for thought. Um... All right, so with that said, basically, guys, you know, I've made a whole bunch of videos. You can go follow me on YouTube. Uh, my handle is Watch Old Trade. And I, I've had plenty of videos building watch lists, but I'll do this again. Now, what I basically do is I look for stocks like the biggest percentage gainers and losers. This is Think or Swim. What I'll do is I'll show you FinViz because anybody in the world can access this website as long as they have internet access. And what you do is when you go to FinViz, and I have a video showing you all this, just to, just so you know, but I'll do it again. You go to Screener, <clears throat> and then you go to All, and then, you know, what you can do is you can then check your criteria. So I can say, hey, I want to look for stocks that are up at least 5% from the open with uh, traded over a million shares for the day. All right, it gives me 39 tickers. And then from there, what I can do to see the charts easier is I filter. I like, you know, you can filter by percentage, but I like to filter by volume to see what's the most volume, and then I work from there. So then here it is. We start here. Here's Tesla. And then what I do is I go to charts, and then I go to candle. So that it makes it easier for me to look at the stocks. And I like to look for stocks that are up, holding their highs, because you may look for a continuation or to buy a dip you know or to short depending you know on the price action like tesla that's going to be the number one play for tomorrow tomorrow everybody will be trading this because um, um i forget the guy's name that owns tesla uh god i'm drawing a blank but anyway this guy is talking about taking the company private there was a lot of people short and when he said that all those shorts got destroyed and just they had they got squeezed out and they just drove the price of the stock up so, you know, Tesla is obviously a super expensive stock, but just to show you how you would play this, all right, I'm going to remove, I'm going to, I'm going to clear, I'm going to clear the, the chart. So I'm just going to right click on it, clear drawing setting. So just to show you. So this is how I would play this. This is what I usually do is people ask me, I go like 30 days and I look, I go back 30 days and I look at a 15 minute time frame, and I just look at the clear pivot levels. The, what I mean by pivot levels is I'm looking for a, the the this where the stock where the trend changed where you saw a clear change in direction um and i'll start from today now after hours this thing is up so it hit a high of 387.46 so i'm just using oops so i'm just gonna map these lines i already have this defaulted um here with my drawing tools for my price level you can watch i have a whole video on how to set this up just watch the video um, and then all I'm going to do is I'm looking to see where it bounced up and down. So this is important right here because this is the breakout level yesterday. And this is where it started to rip. And you can see now this is where it clearly gapped up and then pulled back and then found support here. All right. And then it gapped up there, pulled back, found support here. All right. So I always start with the 15 minute time frame to see like the support resistance right there. Right. And you know, then I'll zoom out a little bit to kind of see, just to see where it's aligned. And look, and here it is. And then you know, you can go further back down if you want. Like I would map this. Like this would be a clear level for me um, down here because this is the low where it kind of gapped up, and then it gapped up here, and then it pulled back. So these these levels would all matter to me. Now and then, what I do is I go back, like I go to the five minute time frame to look at the five minute, make sure I didn't miss anything. In terms of support and resistance so now I'm on a five minute time frame you can see how it's kind of like pivoted so on a five minute time frame this may matter because you know you won't see it on the 15 minute but on a five minute time frame this thing bounced off this so I'll map it this just so I can catch it catch it and everything else kind of like is choppy these are the levels that I would be looking to trade okay 
And if you want tomorrow, you know, map these the way I did and see how the stock reacts tomorrow. So what I would be doing is if I was gonna watch this stock, I like to trade off a, I used to always trade off a one minute. Now I'm, I'm liking the two minute more. Um, so I use a two minute time frame a little bit more. It gives me a clearer indicator now. I use the one and the two, but I'm, I'm, I'm gearing, I'm leaning towards the two. So tomorrow what I wanna see is, you know, how this is gonna react when the market opens. I mean, obviously before the open, this is gonna be, you know, somewhere between, I would say, 368 and 387. It should be in that range. And I want to see. So at the open, I may want to see if is it going to hold above 374.14. I may take this long, risking that. Um, you know, or if it's above here, you know, maybe I don't want to touch it. I want to see if it's going to break above the 387.46. So I want to see the break. I want to see a pullback, a retest. And then, you know, then watch it take off and then I buy, you know. So you buy the breakout if it holds, but but maybe it doesn't. So you can short it, risking that. So, you know, it just really depends on the on the trend. If you're looking at it on a one-year time frame, it you know, this stock, I mean, look at this crazy gap up. It, it, it looks like it's trending higher. This is the key level right here. So you want to map where the one-year high is. The one-year high is 389.61. So I would, just for fun, I would like change the color here to, to like you know like maybe I'll make it green and greens let me know that that's the one year high so you know that will be the true test to see where it's if it's gonna break that level tomorrow you know and that's how I do I map my support and resistance you know because maybe 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 it pulls back and maybe it gaps up and then it gets into this consolidation area can't hold and collapses so I go short risking that level that's it guys I just have VWAP here you know on my uh, other so I have this setup here where I have the one minute five minute 15 minute and daily here you know I have the 50 simple moving average the 200 and the 300 set in all of them but honestly I don't even you don't really need them I mean they, they can be powerful and helpful at times but I, to me the best thing to use is support and resistance you know so Tesla would be something that I would put on my watch list so let me just uh, let's go here create watch list so we'll put 88 just to see how it reacts tomorrow that's gonna be the most volatile stock okay all right so that was the first stock all right Hertz is up too. Hertz is up big Hertz is something that you know because it had a big day um, you know it could be the beginning of an upward trend I don't know what the news is but because it's up so much and it can be volatile at times I wouldn't I wouldn't mind um, you know mapping Hertz so I would put Hertz on my watch list so here Hertz had a clear let me just clear this so you can see and again I would do what I said I go back 30 days 15 minutes see where the stock is at over the last 30 days um, and you know obviously this is the high 2035 so I'm gonna map that and here it kind of this is where it it found its support right so you're gonna map that and here it kind of bounced here so it's in this price channel currently right and you can see that it just bounced here bounced 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 so I'm just gonna add this here and then I want to see it on a five minute time frame just to get a, a different type of view so on the five minute yeah you see here this is where it kind of pulled back and then ripped so this is where you know it gapped up here pulled back and then kind of ripped um, and you see on the 15 minute you don't see that you see how, how it's different here on the 5 that's why I like to use the 15 first and then the 5 but the 15 is more powerful because that's where more volume held so you know the 15 to me these are these are more critical points than on the 5 but I'll still map an area if I see something so it was a consolidation level here on the 5 and then it kind of took off so just for just for fun, I would I would map it. And there was a lot of volume traded in these five minute candles, so yeah, it's, it 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 does kind of matter. So the reason why I'm mapping this is because it gapped up here, pulled back, and kind of found the support here, and then continued up. So this is kind of where I see where it 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 bounced right here. So that's why I'm mapping this. But this whole area you gotta be mindful of. This area right here, also here. So you gotta this whole channel you gotta be mindful of. But that's how I'd be looking. I would be looking at these levels. So what I would be looking to see is it going to break 2035 or is it going to att attempt this to get up here get rejected and pull back and you could take a short risking that you know or it might fade pre-market and then maybe it gaps up so maybe it fades pre-market gets down to like this level here 1852 or 1775 and then it 
it spikes at the open, but it can't break this because it doesn't have a lot of volume, and then it rejects, and then you go short risking it. You know, that's 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 trading, guys, in in a nutshell. You know, so I would put Hertz on my watch list just to show you. Oops, so oh, so Hertz and TSA TSLA. Oops. Okay, TSLA. All right, and we have some other stocks. Oh, Office Depot ripped. Uh, oh, oops, let's put that here. All right, so let me check some other stocks. So we're now we're going up. Oh, sorry, I got this, guys. All right, here we go. So I'll keep looking. ODP. So yeah, Office Depot's up. I mean, in theory, you can check it to see if how it's going to react to that three dollars. That's important because it's close. I mean, it's it's fading post market, but that's something that I may potentially look at. Um, you know, and what I like to do again is, all right, what does it normally trade? F Five million is the average, but it traded 17 million today. So it probably had some news. It probably beat some earnings or something. Um, what does it say? Office Depot shares up 20 percent. Surge higher. Shows same store declines. Best results. Sales increase. Yeah, so I guess I guess it beat estimates. That's why it's up. But it's you know it's not a, it's not a company that people are super excited about. Um, actually, over the last year, its high was six dollars. But it does have a lot of. If you notice here, let me pull up the one year. If you pull up the daily, it's very important to know where the overhead resistance is. So if you know, there's a lot of consolidation here. Um, but if it has another huge volume day tomorrow. Um, you know, it could it could potentially like if it had another 17 million share day, it can break through this and keep going because on average this this stock trades anywhere between three and five million shares. So you know, if it has 15 million shares, you can expect more than likely it's going to break three and keep going trending higher. But because it has this gap to fill below, I think tomorrow it'll be a good short. Um, that's just my guess. So what I would be doing, it's already faded. Actually, it, it had to move. So what I would think, what I would do is, right? So this is what I would do if I was looking to trade this. Uh, not to show, but just to show you patterns more than anything else, right? So I'm gonna map that. I'm gonna map this. And here I'm not using the 15 minute. I'm just using a, um, I'm just using the two minute here. This is fine. If you wanted to, just to see what it looks like. Here's what it looks like on a 15 minute time frame. All right, so here is really the clear, clear support level. If I wanted to, I could, in theory, I can hit remove and do that. Here we go. This is where it held up. This is where it bounced. This is where it ripped. This is where it pulled back, right? So I think tomorrow, if I was to short this, my price target would be that 255 level. This is where I would cover. Now, what would be cool is if it, if it kind of like held this at the open and then it spikes, and then it comes into this like consolidation hub right here and gets rejected and then just fades all day and comes back down. That's that's what I would expect to happen. But let's see. So I'll put it on the watch list just so just to see how what would happen. Um, all right, so let's keep looking. So I'm just looking to see if the stocks that are holding their highs. Here's another stock, NT NPTN. You got EGLT. You got there's a lot of stocks here that are look at this that are all holding their highs. That's why this can get time consuming because you can wind up looking like soda is a stock, $123 stock. But this was something I would watch because look at this, man. This is, the range is crazy. This part, you know. But um, let me see here. Now, I'm going to look for stocks that are under $5 now. I'm going to change this up just to, just to show you a couple of the low float penny stocks. Uh, maybe we could add one or two here. There was one, I don't know why I don't see it here. Uh, ESKO is here or ODP. Where's the one that I had on that I found yesterday? Uh, let me do this. I don't know why I don't see it, but there is a stock. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Make me scan. Uh, man, why I don't see it? This is my watch. Let me go to my watch list that I had for today. It was on it for today. Um, yeah, C H K K E was on the watch list. This is something that I would. Uh, it's up twelve percent, and it, it and it's only it's a dollar. Let me see if it comes up on the Finviz scan. I didn't I didn't see it. And that's weird. I don't know why it's not coming up because it's under. That's weird. Let's see over one dollar. 
Hmm. I'm sorry guys, I'm just curious to know why it's not coming up on the scan because it's it fits the criteria over millions, over a dollar, it's up 5%. Alright, but CHKE is something I'm gonna put I had on the watch list for today, and I'll keep it on the watch list for tomorrow. Let me put it on the big chart. So, you know, this stock had this crazy move yesterday from 40 cents to uh, 98 cents, which is crazy. And it got to a high of 130 pre market today. And you can see how it, you know, it sold off. It found its support right here, 86 cents. Um, and then it kind of like gapped up and it's holding this area. Now, what I would think tomorrow is that it would probably attempt to get to this area, get rejected, and tank. Um, I'm trying to remember. Oh, this is why I had this is why I had the 115 mark. You see, because this is where it, it gapped up and then pulled back. So I'm fine with where my support level, support and resistance levels are. This is where it, it faded. Um, this is where it it uh, it touched and pulled back yesterday. That's why I have it here. Just so now, because we have a new support level, this is kind of where it found its support and then ripped up. So I would be mindful of this level 286. And I would see what's gonna happen. So this stock, um, it, you know, it's, you know, it closed. It's it. Uh, it's not sure which direction it's going in. Um, but it, eventually, it's gonna find its way back down. That's just my my hunch. If we look at the yearly, oops, let me pull back. You're gonna see that you know every time it has a run it gives it all back right every run it's had it's it all. look at this big green day and then it gave it all back a couple of green days gave it all back so this shit is going to give it all back so interactive brokers would probably have shares to short this e-trade would too because it's over a dollar now i'm pretty sure they might have shares i would be looking to short this i would be looking to see the hope is that you know it would spike at the market open and you would risk off that 115 level to see or the 130 i don't think it gets back up there but and, and and the reason why is let me pull back the one year again because yesterday it traded 15 million and today it only traded 10 so it's already losing steam so my guess is it's gonna lose more steam tomorrow um, unless it breaks 130 and people you know pull you know breaks it pulls back holds it and then moves then maybe people it will jump on people's radar and maybe people might buy it but I don't think it's gonna happen so I would be watching CHKE for a potential short to, to short into resistance um, you know see this whole consolidation level um, and again the reason why I have the 115 map because this is where it bounced so it came up here you know kind of pulled back and um, you know found support here this was like post market and then ripped pre market this morning and you know kind of bounced off here and then faded so you know in theory you can even map this because this is where it kind of bounced pre market too so you can map all this to see how it's going to react tomorrow so i'll put that on the watch list for today ch i mean for tomorrow chke oops let's go personal chke all right so i found some stocks that are gapping up now let me look for stocks that are gapping down all right so instead of keeping change for open uh five percent i'm gonna say down five percent and guys, if you don't like, let's say you run this and you get very few stocks, then lower the criteria. They look for stocks that are down three percent or two percent. You know, you gotta play around with it to figure it out. Okay. And then what I like to do is look for stocks that had like big, big red days. Um, like for example, like a stock like APC or a stock like um, SRCI to see how it's, you know, see how much volume it normally trades and how much is it down. You know. Um, there's some big big ones here let's see how many stocks came up here uh, total of um, total of 47 all right I'm gonna just pick two okay now normally I would take a lot a lot more time to look through this um, but I don't want to make this video too too long and I got plenty of videos let's use let's use DF I'm just gonna use DF let's look at the chart at first off let's say DF Okay, so this is the way I play the stocks that are gapping down. All right. Oh, this is a stock that I had mapped before. All right, so this is how I play this. Okay, so let's look at the 30 day 15 minute chart. This stock has been on a downward trend, it's just been getting eviscerated. Now, what I like to do is I like to see, okay, so the pre market here is just, this is where it started um, selling off. So here's, here's where it found support. 
and then it gapped up and this is where it found resistance right here right when the market opened right and then it found support here so I'll map this found some resistance here found support here found resistance here and now it's down to 803 right so what I would be looking is to see all right I look at one year and I say all right this stocks had a couple of big red days maybe tomorrow finishes green but maybe it's still on that downward trend so the way what you do is let me put five day two minute what I would do is tomorrow when the market opens, now it traded 9 million shares, 9.5 million shares, normally trades a million shares. So a lot of people are short and they're holding this. They're gonna cover at some point. What I would look to see is tomorrow is if this is gonna bounce, it's gonna, op op it's gonna gap up at the open, it's gonna find its way up to this 930 level and this is where the, all the consolidation is and it's probably gonna get rejected there and then it's gonna fade off and continue to go down. All right, that's what I would expect now but if it held 9830, then maybe you want to take it long here, risking the next uh, resistance level 861. Okay, you know you watch the price action to see, you know maybe it doesn't get there because there's some consolidation here, and maybe it gets rejected here. But you know that's how I like to play these. I like to look for the bounce and then look for the key area where it gets rejected and then short risking off that area. I just I do it all the time. You know, let's take a bigger price stock. So that's that DF. So I'm put that on the watch list just to see all right and there's not too much going on you know that's why these the markets kind of whack and you know I could I could bring down the criteria watch so if I like right now there's 47 stocks but if I say the for stocks down 3% let's see how many more I get I get 102 stocks you know so you can see the huge difference like all right so let's see give me give me NWL let's look at this stock big red day That's why building a watch list, you know, you got to like take the time to look. And this thing is down a lot from 27 to 21. All right. It looks like it's, you know, eventually it's going to have a bounce, but it's probably not going to get all the way back up. Right. So what I would do again, right. I put the 30 day, 15 minute time frame. This stock is a newer company. So I'm going to map support and resistance. So here I'm going to map this. This is where there's a clear bounce. Here's some resistance right here. And here that that bounce and here here's some resistance here and this is the low and these are the areas that I, I would find important now you know obviously you want to hear some here's some more support some more resistance kind of gapped up bounced here and you know I would be looking at these areas these potential areas and each one of these candles is an area of resistance so if the stock rips, you would look at one of these areas to potentially go short. And I, I map them all. So here I go. So I'm mapping them. 15 minute time frame is a good time frame too to give you a good barometer. Alright, so I mapped them. And then you know you again you can look at the five minute if you wanted to add any. But this a stock like this where you didn't get a lot of pivots, the 15 minute is pretty good. Um and I would have all my lines mapped to see how it's gonna play out tomorrow. All right. So what I would think tomorrow is this stock is going to gap up. It's probably going to get into this, you know, 22, 24 level. Hopefully it gets rejected and then continues to fade. Or, you know, if you know, you can you can buy let's say in the market opens and it and it holds 2191, you go long, taking it long. And and your next the next resistance point is your price target. So each resistance point is a price target, you know? And, but eventually what's going to happen is on a stock like this, you, it, it may rip and then right over here, this this would be a critical level, 2250. It may, maybe it rips all the way back up here and gets rejected and then just fades and it fades a lot. Or the next level, it's gonna, one of these two levels is more likely going to get rejected and then it's going to fade. And it may continue on, you know, back up, but, but once it gets to these levels, it'll probably get rejected because these are the key pivot points and it's going to need volume in order to, to, to break past it. And that's what I do, guys. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop there. I mean, I could have put more you know more energy and time to build the watch list, but these are fine for me now. Um, if I see anything else, I'll post it. You know, in theory, what I like to do is for me a lot faster is to just go through 
go through the tickers like this on Think of Swim. Like AKTR is a nice little thing. And sometimes I'll just like filter by price and I can see like, like the cheaper stocks. EGLT, look, EGLT is a stock that, you know what, I'm gonna put on the watch list. Look at this, I found this. It went from 33 cents to 68 cents. That's a pretty significant move. Um, so, you know what, we'll, we'll watch this tomorrow too. Look for this for maybe a continuation higher. It looks like it's on an upward trend. So, I'll map 68. It's not an exact science, but yeah, 68. Okay, and here's the pivot point. So this is where it kind of like found support here. Ripped up. Right here is a double top here, so that's important. So I would be looking at these key levels to see how they respond tomorrow. Um, you know, you can see now it's in this price channel. And the bulls are still controlled. Now, if this this if this sells off, this level below right here, this is kind of like the breakout level. This is the key level where I'd be looking to buy the stock. You know, if it if for a dip buy, and you gotta watch here. There's some support here. That's why that's why I use the five minute too sometimes. So this stock could t potentially go higher. Um, I've seen this stock trade. I traded this stock before. Um, you know, it's had a couple of green days. You know, you gotta look again. Look to see where the overhead resistance is. Um, there's a lot of overhead resistance up over here. I mean, uh, two million shares traded. So yeah, this is this could be significant right here. This level here, which is the low, is 77 cents. So I would be uh, mindful of the 77 cent level if it broke out and broke past 70. But you know, tomorrow, let's say people are getting you know get hip to this, so. You know they wanna they they take it long. Just be mindful of that seventy seven cent level. But if it gets like this, or if it doubles the volume, um, you know it can break it. So just keep that um keep that in mind. I just want to talk about one last thing. I just want to talk about the stock that I posted today. And to just to show you, let me go back how it all works and why I was so confident in the in the prices that I had posted. Nobody, my first off, nobody talked about the stock. This was a stock that I added on my watch list because it held its high. See, it was it was a stock that yesterday gapped up. You see, it had the gap up. This is something I would have found on Fitness. All right, and and let me pull up the big chart. Oops, sorry about that. So let's talk about why noon 1860 was the level to dip by it, and why did I know about the quick scalp? Because I first said take a quick scalp at 1950. And then dip by the 1860. So let me do the five day two minute. So right, I, I literally caught I literally logged in because I was working and I just had a couple of minutes to see what was going on. So I saw this right away because it was on my watch list. And I saw it was fucking getting eviscerated at the open. I couldn't believe how it was just panic selling. When you get a panic selling like this, you're gonna get a bounce at some point. You're gonna get a bounce. Always you're gonna get a bounce. And that you got, you take advantage of that bounce. You can dip by those at any time. Tim Sykes, you know, claims that it's penny stock. This is all stocks do this. It doesn't matter what price. It could be this. It could be Tesla. It could be Google. It could be whatever. And if a, if if the stock is tanking like this, you're gonna get a bounce. So what happened was, and you can see on Twitter, I called it out. I said I saw the stock tanking, and I had mapped my support and resistance levels the day before. And let me just zoom out a little bit so you can see. And I had the 1951 level mapped here. The reason why is because, look, when it gapped up, this was yesterday, it pulled back and held that 1951 level and then continued higher. So when I saw it tanking, right, when I saw it tanking, I saw that it was tanking, 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 tanking. And my perception was that it was going to find support here at 1950 and you're gonna get, you were going to get a little scalp. And you did. And I said it on Twitter. If you go to Twitter, I said, hey, you know, if it held 1950, I would buy for a scalp. And look, it gapped up that it, it went from 1950 to 2005, which was the 2006, that was the low here, which was the resistance level, kind of consolidated and then continued to tank. But once I saw this next level tank, I said, it's absolutely going to bounce at that next level. Now, how did I know it was 1860? Simple. Because 1860 was the previous breakout level. That's it. That's it. That's how I knew. It's that simple. I just looked. I just looked back on the further time frame. I saw that the net, the breakout level was 1860, and that people were gonna probably buy. And look, people saw this. It got below 1860, 
got low to 1850 and then ripped all the way up back to this clear resistance level right of uh 2085 couldn't hold it and look at this you see this 2005 level look it can't hold it and you could have took it short risking 2005 you consolidated right here didn't have enough volume to hold it that's all it is guys that's all trading is that's all it is that's what i do when i see these big panic stocks sell i buy the dip and then what i usually do is to see that where the big price candle where it has a lot of volume if it can't hold it i short it and you can do this again and again and again and again and again when the market opens just look for the biggest percentage losers and just look for just go through the tickets and find something that's just massively panic selling and you can do this again and again and again you can do these it's just patterns guys trading stocks is all about patterns you know it's all about patterns and look what happened guys so it couldn't hold that level right it couldn't hold that support level so it tanked look where it found its support very close to that 1860 level because shorts covered there and it called the artificial spike dip buyers bought it and guess what it couldn't break that 2005 level right can break that guy candle and look got up there touched it and then people could have reshorted it again this was a very volatile stock very easy to play right off that level gave you a nice easy place to trade that's all it is guys I mean they, you know people try to oversimplify trading but you know it, it doesn't have to be complicated just map your support and resistance levels watch the price action if it gives you an opportunity attack if a stock is like really slow moving stay away from it it's not you know who has the patience to be watching it all day and that's pretty much it guys so um you know you can find me you can find me on um uh, i think uh yeah so you can find me on twitter watch old trade okay for those of you who've never seen me before this is this is uh this is a support resistance god that's what i you know put stupid name just to be a clown i actually have an instagram too support and resistance i used to have watch old trade i have a i just use my personal one that's where i'm at and um look and you know this is what i called out today based off the support and resistance you know this is the first call out see i said what a massive sell-off would have worked excellent got rejected over here this is now a tank watch for the bounce a risky 1860. Oh, this is the first one. This is why I say, see, if G Sky, if you can hold 1950, I buy the dip for a scalp. Not for a scalp. See? And it scalped. It went up to that $20 level and then got rejected. Could have got 50 cents on the scalp. And then here, I told everybody short, risking the 1860. And then that's when it ripped all the way up to that $20, $21 level before it tanked again. And I do this all the time, guys, on Twitter. I do this all the time. You know, and you can go through my timeline when I was really active from like January to March. I mean, I was calling out plays crazy. I called out, I called out all these plays too. I mean, I was just letting you know, explaining the chart patterns. People are not giving me the credit. Uh, look at this. I called this out OBXR. I was telling everybody, you know, I would watch the stock, see how it reacts to support and resistance. If it can't hold 260 or 275, good place to short. If you can find shares, <laughs> look what happened. 275 couldn't hold it down to two it actually went down to 210 which was the support level and bounced off it and i called it out before it happened and i'm and i'm showing you the you know i, I understand when people post big big p l's like that's what you focus on that's what's attractive but they're not showing you anything man they're not they just they just luring you in with that bullshit that nobody's teaching you shit so anyway guys you know i have that and i also have my um you know youtube page um i'll be more active and you know if it just really depends i may completely get the fuck off in uh, social media at some point or i may do this and take this you know start teaching trading you know if people are really interested we'll see i'll start with a group if if people are interested what i really would like to do is have half men half women in one group and then you know help everybody in that group become profitable and then you guys let everybody know hey you know what i'm actually making money in the market consistently because you know and then you know i'll go from there but i got if you go here, I got, <laughs> I don't know how many videos, like, I think it's over 100 videos or something crazy like that. But if you go to the, I think it's the playlist, I mean, I got everything here. I got this, all this. I would say, like, if you really want to see, because I've been tracking my, my videos since, like, December of, like, 2016. You know, this is when I was using indicators and all that bullshit. I, I, I moved away from all that. If you want to see how I'm really doing well start from january of this year and just go through all these videos uh, from january all the way to may and i guarantee you you'll really find an edge 
um, and if you want to you don't know nothing about the market watch this video momentum trading fundamentals is something I did a couple of years ago uh, and it gives you a nice it's like a DVD you know sort of you know gives you a sort of like overview of how trading works you know so um, you know so um, if you have any questions let me know and uh, I'll make some more videos soon um, hope you found this helpful and it's been great uh, you know keeping up with everybody I'm glad to see everybody doing well um, you know remember if you're in a chat room make sure you're getting your money's worth after those questions make sure you're understanding why people are getting into trades and don't be afraid if you if you're skeptical of your guru ask him to show you his broker statements if he doesn't want to show you it then that, that gives you that should give you pause all right so anyway have a great evening guys and uh, see you soon talk to you soon